Number 10, Fake Kidnapping In August of 2017, 20-year-old British glamour model Chloe Ayling made news headlines when she stepped into the British consulate in Milan and said she had just been released from kidnappers after six days in captivity. Chloe informed officials that she had arrived in Milan for a modeling assignment, had been injected with ketamine, shoved into a bag, then put into the trunk of a car. Then, she was driven 75 miles or 120 kilometers to a secluded farmhouse outside Turin. She claimed she was gagged and unconscious for part of the voyage. Later, she was told that she would be auctioned off as a sex slave on the dark web for $300,000. The case went viral, and Chloe made appearances on TV doing interviews. In those appearances, she wore tight pants and low-cut shirts and smiled as she claimed she, quote, feared for her life. Chloe stayed in Italy for three weeks as police investigated her kidnapping before returning to her house in Coolston, South London. As reporters began to probe her story further, they wondered if she was telling the truth. Because if she was, then why was she caught on security cameras in an Italian village clutching her kidnapper's hand? Why did she consent to sleep in his bed with him? And why did she go shoe shopping with him while she was in prison but not tell the authorities? Before long, the inquiries had devolved into allegations. In court, Chloe's suspected kidnapper, 30-year-old Lucas Haas, claimed that they had devised a plan together to help her out of financial difficulties. He also stated that their scheme was inspired by the plot of a recent film called By Any Means, in which a minor celebrity is kidnapped. He further stated that he was in love with her. Herbert basically told her that if we fake a kidnapping, you'll go on TV and get paid, and then you can pay off your debts. Herba was convicted of kidnapping and extortion in June 2018 and sentenced to 16 years, 9 months in prison. Number 9. Bullying the Teacher In 2017 in North Carolina, two students bullied their teacher so much that it made national headlines and completely ruined the teacher's life. 16-year-olds Brian Joshua Anderson and Brittany Renee Luckenbaugh decided they were going to humiliate their French teacher, 51-year-old David Laughinghouse. They created a single fake identity, uploaded this identity to a social media site, and started catfishing Laughing House. The catfishing worked so well that they managed to trick him into believing he was having a relationship with a real adult woman. In this case, the teens really did get the last laugh. Through their fake profile, they convinced their teacher to send naked photos of himself. They then shared those photos with their classmates, and that's all it took for the photos to go viral online. The teacher, who had been working at the high school for 16 years, was immediately suspended. And considering everyone has seen him naked, it's very likely that he'll never go back to school again. He was bullied out of his own job by his own students. The teens were arrested and charged with misdemeanor disclosure of private images, but they were soon released on $5,000 bond. Number 8. False Allegations In the early hours of May 20, 2018, Texas State Trooper Daniel Hubbard stopped a female motorist on suspicion of drunk driving. Sharita Dixon Cole was eventually arrested and charged with driving while intoxicated. In the aftermath of the event, she publicly accused Officer Hubbard of touching her inside and outside of his patrol cruiser during the traffic stop. The 37-year-old's claims spread swiftly online thanks to noted social activist Sean King and attorney Lee Merritt, both of whom reposted multiple posts about the alleged attack. In response to Dixon Cole's allegations, the Texas Department of Public Safety released a two-hour video of Officer Hubbard's body camera footage from the night of the traffic stop. Dixon Cole was shown on the video performing a series of field sobriety tests, all of which she failed. The woman was later apprehended and placed into the Ellis County Jail. Officer Hubbard was never shown to have engaged in any of the abusive actions mentioned in Dixon Cole's complaints. She later submitted a formal apology to the officer and stated that the assault was a lie. The fraudulent statements could have resulted in legal action by the Ellis County District Attorney, but they announced that there will be no additional charges aside from the original count of drunk driving, which will be pursued against Dixon Cole. Number 7. Ketchup in the Tub On March 9, 2017, shortly after 9 p.m., police officers in Sandusky, Ohio rushed to a home in the 600 block of Meg Street in response to reports of a homicide. When the authorities arrived, they discovered that the homeowners, Natalie Shillette and Micah Reisner, had failed 
fake Natalie's horrific death. The alarm was sparked after they text a photo of her allegedly lifeless body to her family. Risner then explained how he splashed ketchup all over the bathroom after Natalie posed in the tub that gave the impression she was dead. After they sent a picture of the gruesome sight to Risner's sister over Facebook Messenger, numerous concerned friends called the police, unaware that it was all a hoax. It was then revealed that the pair staged the act in order to entice Risner's sister to come to their residence and confront her for allegedly stealing money from them. The prank had unforeseen consequences for the engaged pair who were charged with inciting terror in the aftermath of the incident. Would you rather be tricked in believing a friend or family member faked their own murder or find out that you were adopted? Let us know in the comments below and hit that subscribe button while you're at it. Number 6. Fight Like a Jessica Jessica Ann Smith, a Pennsylvania native, reported her diagnosis of colon cancer in a Facebook post in June 2019. The 31-year-old was instantly met with an outpouring of sympathy. Soon after, she started a Facebook fundraiser called Fight Like a Jessica to gather money for her alleged substantial medical bills. Smith also made a GoFundMe campaign for the same purpose, and she allegedly garnered more than $10,000 in donations between the two fundraising platforms. The incident was initially brought to the attention of the authorities a couple weeks later when a female associate of Smith phoned the Uchelon Township Police Department, stating that, to the best of her knowledge, Smith had not been diagnosed with any type of disease. Smith's husband submitted an official police report on 31st July 2019, alleging that his wife had gotten the Facebook and GoFundMe donations fraudulently under the false premise that she was ill. He also revealed that he was certain Smith had not been diagnosed with cancer because she was still covered by the medical insurance he received through his job till November 2019. Smith was detained and charged with theft by deceit as well as the other theft-related charges. In the end, she was sentenced to three years of probation and mental health therapy beginning in January 2021. Number 5. Another Fake Kidnapping Sherry Papini, a California woman, went for a run through the rural neighborhood surrounding her Reading home on the afternoon of November 2, 2016, and never returned home. Sherry's husband tracked her phone to a place less than a mile away from the house, but the mother of two was nowhere to be found. The 34-year-old's relatives were concerned that she had been kidnapped, and a large search operation was launched. Rescuers searched the region using scent dogs and helicopters, but the search yielded no results for the first few weeks. On Thanksgiving Day 2016, Sherry was discovered restrained on the side of the road in Woodland. She'd allegedly sustained a number of injuries, including a fractured nose and a mark on her shoulder that appeared to have been caused by a branding iron. Sherry claimed that she was abducted on the day she went missing by two Hispanic women. Her kidnappers allegedly kept her confined in a closet and would beat her at gunpoint and brand her with the red-hot branding iron on a regular basis. Sherry was able to offer the FBI comprehensive physical descriptions of the two alleged perpetrators. FBI sketch artists then used those descriptions to produce composite portraits which were then made public. However, troubling information about the exact nature of Sherry's kidnapping emerged in March of 2022. A According to a news release from the Department of Justice, the woman made up the whole story and was voluntarily staying with her ex-boyfriend in Costa Mesa while her family desperately searched for her. Sherry allegedly went so far as to hurt herself in order to authenticate the false statements she later made to authorities. When presented with the evidence of her fraud, Sherry refused to recant her previous statement and even offered more false information about her alleged abductors. But Sherry's ex-boyfriend came forward and told police everything. As a result, she was arrested and charged with making false statements to federal law enforcement officials and committing mail fraud. Number 4. Tricking Girl Scouts A man in Oregon was busted for tricking Girl Scouts with counterfeit cash to purchase their cookies. When Tiffany Brown saw that her daughter had been given fake money to buy a box of tagalongs, she was furious. And so, on February 16th, 2020, she filed a police report. And because the local troop does not recoup its Girl Scouts for any lost profits, all of the very real money for the cookies came out of their own pocket. It was a despicable crime. Who does that to innocent Girl Scouts? Luckily, the young victim was able to give a detailed description of a robber to the police. The cops then worked with the local Walmart to identify the man the next time he showed up at the store. His name is Camden Stevens Ducharme, and he's been arrested on charges of theft and forgery. Number 3. Face Painted During the height of the pandemic in 2021, two influencers, Josh Paler Lynn and Leia Sin, were arrested in a foreign country for a prank that went horribly wrong. 
At this time, face masks were mandated, and the pair came up with a ridiculous plan to stage a stunt by going into the supermarket with Leia having the bottom half of her face painted blue and white to look like a face mask. This was in Bali in Indonesia. The influencers managed to make it past the security guard and into the supermarket, but that was as far as they made it. It was pretty obvious that Leah wasn't wearing a mask and that the duo were up to no good. They had their phones out recording and they couldn't stop giggling and were just acting generally suspicious. Josh is a Taiwanese content creator who defended his actions by saying it's his job to give the people what they want and to entertain his followers. Leah, on the other hand, didn't have any kind of excuse. The Russian national had her passport confiscated, as did Josh, and they were brought to an immigration center where they waited to be deported back to their countries. Indonesia is really the last place you want to be caught breaking a law. Authorities there aren't fond of tourists who deliberately do so because they think it's funny. Both of them were quickly deported and will probably not be allowed back in Bali anytime soon. Number 2. Real Life Hulk Romario Dos Santos Alves is a bodybuilder who tried to look like the Incredible Hulk. One day, he almost died after he injected a strange concoction of painkillers, oil, and alcohol to pump up his biceps to ridiculous proportions. The 25-year-old used to be a bodyguard but started becoming obsessed with the gym and getting bigger and stronger. And because of it, he's been facing a long list of health issues ever since injecting all of those things into his muscles. The synthetic filler he used is so dangerous that that doctors one time told him he had to have his arms professionally amputated. Romario himself said that he got addicted to injecting the stuff into his muscles because he loved the way it made him look. But honestly, if gaining muscle was that easy, everyone would do it. Medical professionals told Romario that his muscles and everything inside his arms had basically turned to rock from so much oil being injected. His arms got so hard that he couldn't even get a needle to pierce his skin anymore because it was like stone. He even went so far as to buy specialized needles that are normally used on bulls. Thankfully, he did manage to quit using the substance. Instead of amputating his arms, the doctors were able to remove the hardened chunks of stone formed by the oil. His fake muscles almost killed him. Number 1. Sick Note in December 2021, Trent Freeman, a former sheriff's deputy from Gilchrist County, Florida, was arrested when it was determined that she had lied about being hospitalized with COVID-19. The 38-year-old claimed to have been admitted to the hospital after getting the virus in the fall of 2021. She even faked her medical records to sustain the false claim that she become unconscious while seeking treatment. In reality, Freeman was actually in good condition and had started working full-time at a private sector non-law enforcement job. In early 2021, her supervisor at the county sheriff's office began to suspect her of fraud. Following an inquiry by the Florida Department, following an inquiry by the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, it was discovered that Freeman had been lying about her medical condition, robbing her co-workers of more than $3,700 in paid sick leave. A warrant was issued for her arrest after she was fired from her job on October 15th. She eventually surrendered and was charged with two counts of uttering a falsified statement and one count of scheme to defraud. The former sheriff was put in jail with a bond of $50,000. Thanks for watching. What's the craziest fake out you've ever experienced? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time on the Bad Badger.